Hi, I'm Holly McNish and I'm going to read you a little extract from my new book, Nobody Told Me, which is um, it's basically just a collection of diaries that I wrote from the day I found out I was pregnant on the way to Glastonbury Festival to do my first gig up until the day I dropped off my daughter at preschool when she was three. The entry that I'm going to read for you today I wrote the first week I went back to work when my daughter was seven and a half months old on the 1st of November after maternity leave, so I hope you enjoy it. I started back at work this week. The first day back, my boss immediately joked how parched everyone was since I hadn't been there to make the tea. First thing she said, funny. Less funny because I then had to go and make the tea for everybody. Still, work is good. A hot cup of tea made by somebody else today is good. Working on the computer, doing grown-up things, talking to grown-ups, reading statistics, doing HTML has never felt so great. But I'm shattered as well. I would normally be having an afternoon nap now whilst little one is sleeping, and I realise I can't do that at work. Nobody told me that when maternity leave is over and you go back to work, your baby doesn't automatically sleep all night now that you can't have a nap. Shit. A joke. But it's really hard to stay awake all night and all day. And last night was pretty bad. Little one was up every hour crying, teething, and the only way to help her fall back to sleep was to read her the very hungry caterpillar. That one where a caterpillar hatches, eats some fruit, then some sugary food, Swiss cheese, salami, has a belly egg, eats a leaf, cocoons, and then turns into a butterfly. And no matter how many times I read it, this last part always surprises her. She smiles wide-eyed, then falls asleep. Not for long, though. So I spend the entire night reading the book and watching her fall asleep and then I try to sleep and find myself crying with tiredness when she wakes again. Eventually, I go to bed at 7am and my alarm goes off at 8 and I'm at work for 9. Totally knackered but there. At some point in the morning, I can't find my pen. I look around my desk for it. When I ask my colleague if she can seize it, she laughs knowingly and says I have mushy mummy baby brain now. I hear this phrase a lot at baby group. It refers to a non-scientific theory which says that after having a child, a woman's brain turns into mush. Only the women seem to say this. Men at baby group do not say this. I've never heard of mushy daddy baby brain. Men don't say it because they don't have it. They call it being fucking knackered. A more accurate description, I think. Well done, dads. For mums, I'd maybe add being fucking knackered whilst dealing with the psychological and physical effects of a complete internal and external body transformation. But more often I hear mushy mummy baby brain, or just forgetful mummy brain for short. I find my pen, but decide to go on strike for an hour at work and type poems instead. Mushy mummy baby brain. I'm a nighttime walker and a daytime worker now, and corridors all smell like bed. Computer screens, screensavers, flash photos of beaches as crunching caterpillars munch through my desk. There were ten to begin, one slept, there were nine. Five left, eight fell down, they've cocooned sixty times. Now beautiful big butterflies emerge from beneath me as I answer the phone like a drunk on repeat. Good afternoon. Can I help? Who's calling us, please? They said one went for lunch and then there were three. The meeting's at five, the funders are keen, and the princess is pure because her back felt the pee. On thirty thick mattresses I lie by her bed. My hand on her belly, the floor holds my head. My angel in cot leaves me tattooed teeth indents, transforming my skin into tribal-like imprints. I'm in it, the jungle book, wading through heat, with wall-painted patterns, two marks on each cheek. Now my pages are turning. My folder divides between nine to five, five to nine day and night times. Still, the comments come fast. We look older and tired, that we've let ourselves go since we birthed our first child. We, nighttime walkers, daytime workers, smiling in ecstatic pain. I will beat the next fucker to utter the phrase to me, mushy, mummy brain. As history defines us insane and hormonal, now flittering, minded, unfocused, forgetful, mental, distracted, absent, hysterical, as if pushing a pushchair now defies intellectual, strapped in and ready, a dummy in lips, not just a baby, but mummy and missus and miss. In straitjacket dictionaries, these words scratch like lead, scribbling sexism, subjectively fed, as I'm told I've lost sense if I lose one place pen. Put my keys in my pocket and forget that they're there. One missing object held up as female despair. And these definitions prepare us for lifelong stupidity. Chronic sleep deprivation labelled mental liquidity. For those unpaid labourers, they say stay at home mum. Painting visions of couches and cookies and school runs, not cool. Constant carers ready in sleep. Whether you're employed or you're not, it's still a full working week. And this is bliss. And it is heaven. And it is amazement defined. But it is not the start of us losing our minds. 
And if I seem distracted or preoccupied, it's because our brains never rest and our days stretch to night and our nights become day as we sit up and read. My hand on her belly as she falls back to sleep, smiling at her when I just want to weep and occasional tears do not label me weak. As the last page is turned and I start again one more bedtime, there were ten very clever caterpillars and now there are nine. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like it if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to subscribe. And um, if you want to hear any more poems from me, then just go to holly with an ie poetry.com. <laughs>